now we are in for an amazing, amazing special, special treat. I was very honored to have been uh, a guest of the Aboriginal people in Australia a couple of years ago. And we have one of the most amazing healers and Aboriginal storytellers with us today. And she's going to give us a story that is uplifting and fantastic and we'll learn a lesson. Minmaya, please. Hello, lovelies. Thank you very much for welcoming me back here yet again. Um, I'd like to thank Anne-Marie and the Alone people and all of the people uh, that are gathered here from the different nations. I'd like to also honour and um, uh, ask the blessing of all the spirit ancestors from here that um, each time I take photos here they came, come out in droves. So run around and take some photos, you'll find them uh, all here. Now we have a very, very similar history in Australia as uh, the Native Americans have here. Our babies were knocked on the head and used for dog food in Australia. Um, and one of the, 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 probably the reason why I'm still here is that I had a white father and uh, I was considered to have enough human blood to be trained to be a domestic. Um, and yet I was born down the line called the Wiralu line, which carries women's law. So uh, I was taken away from my family um, and my grandmother made my mother fight and fight to get me back. And um, uh, she got my father on board. And if I went to a Catholic school, <laughs> and got straightened out by the nuns, um, I was allowed to be. Um, so luckily for me, I, um, I, I, I managed to live long enough to carry women's law. And that's what I do now in Australia. I teach uh, women's law and the teachings. We had to hide our teachings also for a long, long time. Our teachings are very, I think, very similar to the Native American teachings. And every time as we grow and we get greedy, we have, we have a number of laws like... Um, uh, you know, in the Catholics have the Ten Commandments, we have 13 laws of greed, vanity, envy, um, uh, anger. Believe it or not, one of our opponents is love, right? Um, because even today, um, that's the teaching I'm going to give today, especially for you kids, because I don't know that we know of enough uh, or teach enough about uh, love and sacrifice. So this teaching is about, um, in these hard times that we've got right now, we all have to make sacrifices for the families, for our children, for our partners, but it's far too easy to just get up and walk away from marriages, to walk away from our families, to walk away from uh, long-term relationships, to walk away and even walk away from our children because time gets too hard. These are the times, what we call the spiritual testing times, uh, of our journey and our path. In our country we have, um, right from the, the part of creation, everything was provided for every single one of us. And we call our creator Bayami, um, and you just call him the Great Spirit. And Bayami created every, every need that we could possibly have um, without giving us the need to take from anyone else or anything else, right? We take, our law in our country is you take what you need from this planet and not what you greed. But we've become very, very greedy. We make good marriages now. Um, good secure financial marriages now rather than marry a soulmate that will take us on our spiritual walk through life. We teach our children um, to be competitive with other children and to say to the other children who don't have as much as them, look what I have, look what I have, look what I have. And our children now expect us to entertain them and provide for them without giving anything back and we don't ask for them to give anything back. Um, then they go into relationships and they expect the person they move into a relationship with to make them happy. Um, it's not that I also have to contribute to this relationship. You are here to make me happy. You are here to provide for me. 
This is just not true. We have to start teaching our children a different way. Now, a long time ago in the dream time, when we go back in our history, we call it the dream time. A long time ago in the dream time, Bayami the Creator, um, he, he gathered all the small birds and he said to them, everything you need I have provided for you within this forest. Never fly above the canopy of the forest because there there are birds of prey and you will not survive. Remember, my law, I have provided everything you need from within this forest. Never fly above it. And there were two little brown birds. And, and, and this teaches you about the oneness of all of creation and the children about honouring the oneness of creation and not being spiteful and cruel. Birds actually fall in love. Did you know that? They fall in love and they partner for life most birds. So these two little birds fell in love. Little plain brown birds. And they started to build their nest. And she would fly in one direction and bring back a bit of strand of grass. And he would fly in another direction and they'd move back at the nest. And males um, always finish the nest. So they would weave together into the nest until the nest was almost complete. And the male always, always goes and gets the final piece of grass or twine or whatever it can get to tie that nest together and secure it while the female goes out and gets down to feather that nest. In this time, we have a very um, special flower that grows within our forest and it's, called, it's the flower of New South Wales, which is my state. And these flowers were only ever white. So this little bird, she went off to gather down to, to down the nest and he went off to get the last bit of twine. She came back to the nest, no partner. And so she frantically looked around and frantically looked around and there was no sign of him. So she started to call, call and call and call. There was no sound from him. And she started to get frantic, absolutely frantic, of what will I do? This is my partner. Where is he? Something must have happened to him. He needs me. He needs me. What will I do? And he still never arrived. And she thought, the only way that I can get a proper look to see if he's hurt somewhere is to risk and fly above the canopy of the forest. And she flew above the canopy of the forest and she looked in one direction, no sign of him. And she was panicking, her heart was beating and pounding. And she looked in another direction, no sign of him. And finally she turned and caught a tiny little glimpse in the corner of her eye, right off in the distance, this tiny little speck coming towards her. She realised she was so relieved. And just as she was about to descend to the forest floor, she felt the talons of the hawk pierce her chest and mortally wounded she struggled from the hawk's grasp and fluttered down into the forest and landed on a white waratah where she just had the strength to hop from waratah to waratah with her life bleeding away. And finally she got upon the nest just as he arrived and died there. And her little mate wailed to Bayami and he goes, why? Why? Why did she die? Why did she die? And Bayami come down and he said, I warned you all about flying above the canopy of the forest. I told you the danger that lie there, um, that the hawk and eagle lived there and that you were in danger. And this little bird was inconsolable. He said, but why? And Bayami said, she sacrificed her life for love. She thought that you were injured. This little bird gave her life. And as a reward for you and your kind from this day forward, this bird, you will carry the blood stain on her breast to remind um, all who come after you of the sacrifice this little bird made for love. In this one instance, the one that will have the redder breast will be the female because she made the sacrifice. This flower that she landed on, the Waratah, will forever from this day forward remain red with her blood to remind the world and all those who come after you, that to love, to love, to truly be part of love, 
you will have to make sacrifices from this day. And we don't teach our children about making sacrifices. We don't ask them to make a sacrifice. We sacrifice. We sacrifice ourselves. We sacrifice our time. We sacrifice our relationships. All are to no avail. Um, because if we want to be part of something that's strong, and, and it starts with family. It starts with teaching our children how to make sacrifices for each other. It starts with um, being, that will, that will make a strong family. To make sacrifices as a family will make a strong community. To make sacrifices as a community makes a strong race. And then a strong race that will make sacrifices will make for a stronger and better world. We're not prepared to make sacrifices anymore. And so all of our teachings come with 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 things every time a, every time a child is greedy or demands or wants, or an adult, or an adult, I remind them. I remind them with one of these stories or one of these teachings um, that, you know, you'll forget me one day. But you know what? Every time you see a little red robin fly past you, you know what you'll remember? You'll remember and you'll be reminded in that moment, am I making the sacrifice that I need to make? Am I making the right choices that I need to make for my journey? You know, um, it's like Adelina said, you don't need to plan for money. You don't need to marry well. You just need to marry right. You don't need to buy your children. You know, at the end of the day, the most important thing you will ever do with your child is give them your time. Because that's, that's the hardest thing you can give anybody. Um, and the most difficult you can give anybody is your time. I hope that if I'm here today and I've changed one just one person's way of thinking in these in these really really difficult times and they're going to get harder believe you me um, I have been given the information of how difficult times are going to get um, in this world and if we don't learn now to make sacrifices for each other and for our relationships it just means we just walk it's not easy to just walk over and go well I'll just have another relationship because this one's too hard it doesn't work that way um, that's not how the Creator intended us to be. Okay? So, that's the teaching of how the Waratah became red. Now you can have your break. <laughs> and thank you for having me. Thank you. Where are you, Anne Marie? You know, I'm, I'm never, I never drag this out. <laughs> oh, thank you. You are so good. <laughs> Thank you From Australia, Min Maya. And I, an amazing and incredible woman. You just gave an absolutely wonderful talk about uh, why relationships are so important. And you're an Aboriginal. Uh, tell us what you do. I'm I'm what's called at home a weirloo. Oh my God. And, yes. <laughs> a weirloo is is it means the, the carrier of women's law. 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 And and that 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 spiritual law. How you actually live under the spiritual law of your people. And my job is to teach women so I teach in Australia we have three kinds of law men's law women's law and our law the men are taught separately by the men in men's law the women are taught separately by women in women's law because if you try to teach them both together what happens is um, because hormones are stronger than spirit it kicks in and, 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 and nothing gets done and so we take the women and teach women about women their positive side their negative side Side, um, what their roles are in a proper way um, as women. How did you come to be here at Indian Canyon for the storytelling event? I, I came here 
here about three or four years ago and I had to return a sacred stone called the Dreamwalker Stone to the Indian people that connected um, the dreaming tracks. There was a prophecy um, in 1987 um, that, that had to be fulfilled. Um, from, from 1990. It's a long story, but my, my journey was to pick up the Navajo Dreamwalker Stone and um, uh, put it in a certain place and then bring it back to, um, and hand it back over to the Indian people. And I came here, um, my friend Liz, I met Liz, she brought me here and I knew this was where I was supposed to hand the stone back. I've been coming every year since. And I've invited Anne-Marie to come to Australia to participate in a woman's initiation into woman. What do you think the nature of human relationships is at this time uh, in history? How has it changed from what it's traditionally been? You know, um, it's it's for me now. Um, it's very very scary because um, families are fragmented and they're becoming more and more fragmented um, every day. You see. Um, uh, parents just walking away from their children, um, children walking away from their parents, and and people are looking at each other and going, why is this all happening? My belief is that we're, we're teaching our children all the wrong things. Every parent, if you're a parent, they want what's best for their children, but their thinking is going all wrong. It's all one guy, which is all up to topsy turvy. They think by giving their child a better bike than the neighbour's child has got, um, sending their child to a better school, um, things that, that make you um, a stepford um, child or a stepford family or a something that comes out of the movies is the thing that makes them really, really good parents. There's no such thing as a good parent or a bad parent. There's a responsible parent or an irresponsible parent. And the responsible parent, their role is to teach the children about being part of a strength, a, a strength of family. And children aren't asked to make sacrifices anymore. Well, if you've got friends who have children, this is what you ask them. When was the last time you asked your child to make a sacrifice for this family? Um, we don't do that anymore. The child will go, but so-and-so's got it, I want it, I want it, I want it. And the parents will work two jobs, um, or three jobs, and they never see that child. They see it for five minutes before it goes to sleep. The child doesn't know its mother, its father. I see we're, we're beginning another uh, ceremony here, but thank you so much for sharing your wonderful story. Because, um, Everybody, let's uh, call some numbers. The story we'll just encapsulated right what you now, said. And 10 after so the next thank you. Storyteller. And thank your name you. again? Your Min Meyer. Ready? Min Meyer. Min Meyer from the Wiradjuri Nation um, okay. of New South Wales. Of the Wiradjuri. I'm the Wiradjuri of the Wiradjuri Nation. Everybody that's wandering.